Welcome to this webinar on successful AutoSAR transformation. My name is Christoph Ebert. I'm the Managing Director of Vector Consulting Services. This webinar consists of several parts. The first part is on the evolution. We will look into technology. And that means we look into what are the major trends in technology. Currently, we observe many drives in the technology. Generally speaking, and you know that from the other webinars, we see a convergence of embedded and IT, more generally of the product IT and the business IT. And that will not stop in front of vehicles. In fact, automotive currently really sets the stage of the evolution. IoT, the Internet of Things, is primarily driven these days by automotive in the true sense, because we drive while we are connected, we upload software, we upload information, we download software upgrades, we use services. All this is a major paradigm change which we observe in entire IT, but with the highest speed in automotive. You can see on this slide a set of topics which dominate this evolution. The topology of our systems moves away from the classic domains and hierarchies into cloud services, zones, high performance computing, etc. We have more encapsulated clusters which have specific tasks but which connect with each other. Times are gone where one embedded controller performs a single task. Now we update these controllers. We use services. And of course, that needs also a change in the hardware. Away from the controllers into standard high performance microprocessors. System of chip will play a crucial role in the future. The architecture is going away from monolithic, one function, one is you, into modular distributed functions, clusters, services, adaptive usage of services. We see real-time operating systems. We see Autosar Classic in the traditional way evolving into more adaptive architectures, which can adjust at runtime, which are using frameworks to develop and build. Traditionally, tier ones have been providing these platforms. We see now a major move that OEMs have a strong background, not only on the architectures, but also in the way how they want to organize the functionality, the services, and the basic vehicle architectures. The past years, we have seen with many of the leading OEMs and of course also supported them, a move into changes like MBSE, model-based system engineering. Suddenly we model system, we model dependencies, the reasoning behind to know about what are impacts, to know how can you best allocate functions in a variety of issues, considering functional safety, considering dependability, and of course, providing a good performance. The configuration of our software in the future is dynamic, which of course brings lots of challenges. I come back on that in future webinar. Languages evolve from C into C++, Go, and other languages, which are partially also domain-specific. We see different language and, of course, also components in infotainment as opposed, for instance, to an engine control. The communication, which used to be based on a static network with signals, is evolving into SOA, service orientation. It's using standard network, which we know from our classic computing infrastructure, Ethernet, IP, and more and more wireless. 5G is the basis for any outside communication. We have 
this communication in IoT, we have this communication in many domains where we need to exchange data or services and of course also for vehicles. The work split, which traditionally was one is you, some departments or supply chain is evolving into service and domains which also demand a new work organization. We have much more ecosystems in the future. We see today already leading tier one working very close with the OEM, of course, on site. And if on site is not possible, then remotely, but very closely collaborating in mixed teams as an ecosystem. The development pattern is evolving into agile and continuous X. Often we receive this question, but agile will not go together with high safety integrity level. Not true. We have a company, we have guided a lot of companies over the past 15 years on their journey into high safety integrity level. One thing which we know for sure is agile and safety is possible. In fact, we can even go one step further and say, without Agile, we have seen struggling many companies because they don't keep commitments. They make a late function change and because they don't have the Agile processes to guide this late change, the defect towards the end actually increase with severe consequences. That means we need some Agile process in order to keep commitments which in turn means that we're able to also keep a high quality level. Now, obviously this is not the HR which you know out of the books. It's clear that a little bit of Scrum and a little bit of Kanban is not yet HR. It needs more. It needs a good spirit to understand which process to use in which environment to achieve specific quality targets. It needs planning, it needs measuring, it needs control. We have seen companies where management gave the perception Agile is like anything goals. This is completely wrong. Agile needs process. And this is, by the way, a very old wisdom. If you go back to the beginning of Agile, I mean, the manifest is a set of process. If you go to extreme programming, it's actually too much process. I'm smiling often when I see some of these HR frameworks like SAFE, and then I think, how the heck do they really still call this HR? I mean, this is dogmatic rules. In other words, HR and HR are many different things. So when you work HR, be careful not just to open a book or follow some framework which would not fit to your specific needs. When we support companies, which have demands on reliability, safety, cybersecurity. One thing is very clear, we will never really take something out of the box. It's always tailored to the supply chain, to the architecture, to the team orchestration. Is it one, is it 10 locations, etc. Finally, and related to this, we have life cycle impact. We need continuous X, continuous integration, continuous development, of course, continuous build, which we do since long, but also some paradigm change with respect to delivery over the air upgrades, for instance, that means function changes or service download mean that we have to observe many regulations while still being flexible. That means we move in a direction where we have strong governments by standards like functional safety, ISO 26262, cybersecurity like the 21434, but also in the domains of um, the software update management, we have UNCE, the regulation 155 and 156 for uh, cybersecurity management and software update management. We have an increasing amount of standards for automated driving from SAE uh, to upwards. That means the amount of governance is of course also increasing. And that means we need new life cycle. In other words, the changes which are in front of us are challenging and inspiring. They give us possibilities to throw away legacy behaviors 
and move in a direction where we are more flexible. It's like what we see from some role models in IT, in vehicle, in medical, which create a startup mentality and still are able to deliver according to needs. This is what we need to achieve also across the companies. If you look now into the AutoSAR evolution and its application, we see in the future in the architecture, this IoT three tier paradigm. That means we have a low level front end computing, which is commodity controllers, which is a basic functionality where you would use OSEC or classic AutoSAR. Then we have integration, it's a middle tier, which is zone oriented. That means for instance, an infotainment zone, connectivity zone, um, engine or powertrain zone, etc. Mixed functionality and mixed architectures. And we have the high performance layer. That's the brain of the vehicle. It's typically built with system of, uh, system of uh, chip architecture. We, can, we have, um, of course, safety and security standards. We have a lot of functional innovation and we need a flexible service-oriented architecture. That means we need adaptive AutoSAR in these cases. And the adaptive AutoSAR is an evolution from the classic, which was more monolithic, top-down, towards adaptive with a maximal flexibility. But it's like with C and C++. C is the language which is high performance efficiency. And we will not get rid of C so fast because a language like C Sharp or C++ brings some advantage, but they also add to the complexity. And like so many things in engineering, we need to make trade off. This is exactly why we distinguish also these three different tiers, because it's not just one solution for all questions. At Vector, we have decade-long experience with AutoSAR. We've been creating AutoSAR. We do a lot of AutoSAR projects and we support companies in their transition towards AutoSAR. And one thing is clear, it's always a decision on a case-by-case, -case, which would be the best possible architecture to achieve a given result. And this would be a topic of our next webinar where we look into the challenges of the AutoSAR transformation but also into what would be our recommendations and benchmarks from Vector. Stay tuned and check at our Twitter account, which is at VectorVCS, or our internet, which is www.vector.com/consulting. Thank you.